Hey folks, welcome back to our YouTube channel on our special CEDIA edition. I'm Gene Delasella, President of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Gene, how are you today, man? Hugo, I'm doing awesome. You know, we had a great show at CEDIA, and I thought it'd be a good idea for us to do one more interview because that was a long video we did last time. We couldn't really cover everything. No, we really couldn't cover everything, and there are like, you know, a few products that I would like us to go over. I mean, there are so many great at most DTS X processors that came up this year that I think we need to go through the list. If I recall correctly off the top of my head, your list has like six good products that you sent me from Cedia. So we should go over those. Um, I think our people will be really interested in them, you know? Yeah, I agree. You know, I think um, some of the some of the products that really caught our eye um, are from big brands that you know, and one of them is Anthem, you know, Canadian company. They've been making lots of processors and electronics for many years. And, you know, their flagship D2 processor, it's like a $10,000 processor, doesn't have Atmos. Mm -hmm. um, and I was expecting maybe they would just refresh that product this year. And, in fact, so far they haven't. They really haven't made any announcements about it. But they surprised everybody with a new processor called the AVM60. Right. And this one's actually much more affordable. It's It's got an MSRP of like $3,000. So it's right in the price range of some of the major Japanese manufacturers. It's really cool. It's 11 channels, you know. It's 11 channels. It's got two subwoofer outputs. But from what I was hearing um, from their product manager, the subwoofer outputs are not independent as oh. far as I know. Uh, but it does have the Anthem Arc room correction system. Now, I haven't personally played with Arc yet, but we've got two reviewers on our site that use and love Arc. And the advantages of ARC are the fact that it limits correction. You could correct from a couple of hundred hertz and down or all the way up to about four or five kilohertz. It doesn't try to do full frequency correction. Oh, that's nice. And as you and I both know, it's a, it's a dicey subject when you try to do full frequency correction. Yes, that's correct. Also, this uh, processor comes with HDMI 2.0. That's yes, it's got it's got all the latest switching. All you know, It does all the full 18 gigabits pass-through. So it's fully up to date. Um, you know, it looked really impressive. They also have uh, two receiver models, and their flagship receiver is an 11 channel receiver. I think it's called the MX MRX 1120. Okay. Yeah, MRX. MRX, I'm, correct. I'm bad with their model numbers. Anyways, the MRX 1120 is basically the same product as the ABM60, but with 11 channel amp. Seven channels of it being discrete class AB. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining four channels are Class D amplifiers, a little less power, but you don't need massive amounts of power for the overhead speakers anyways. Right, right, exactly. Well, that sounds pretty cool. So that's exciting about Anthem. You know, Gene, moving on, how about the Marantz AV7702MKII? It's amazing, um, the names that these... <laughs> it, it, it means Mark II, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's another great product that just came out. The uh, cool thing about that is it pretty much does everything the Anthem does. It's 11 channels, two independent subwoofer outs, which means you can independently set delay and channel trims for each subwoofer output. It has Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we've covered Odyssey in the past, and as we said, it's kind of dicey. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. Unfortunately, Odyssey does full-range correction, We've been talking to Denon and we've been talking to Odyssey about you guys really need to step your game up and, and offer the users more flexibility. Not everybody wants to correct full frequencies. Yes. And that's what's really separating all these different products. All these products are great to begin with. They're all good AV processes. They've all got good preamps built in them. So now it's you're looking at more of a features game. The Marantz brings a lot of cool stuff. It actually offers Oro 3D upgradability. Uh-huh. So you pay a fee. You pay a fee. You can get Oro, and you can listen to Oingo Boingo and Surround. Because <laughs> let's face it, Oro has like a handful of, of very obscure uh, discs. Top quality stuff, Gene. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it is cool that Moran supports that in the AV7702 Mark II. They've also refreshed their AV8802A. Uh-huh. So it has the... <laughs> This stuff kills me. <laughs> so it has the latest HDMI switching, you know, 2.0A. It has, you know, um, HDCP 2.2, all that stuff. And basically the 8802 is very similar to the 7702, except it has higher build quality. It's got better components. It weighs a little bit more. 
but it also comes at almost four thousand dollars, so it's a step up in price. Right, exactly. Well, you know, sometimes with higher quality, you get the, also the price increase, so you know how that goes. <laughs> well, I, one of my best friend's fathers once said, "It's never been it's never been cheap to be hip and trendy." So if you want to <laughs> play with the big boys, it costs you a bit more sometimes. Agreed. Yeah. So now moving on, Gene, the next product in line here is the Yamaha 6X A5100 AB processor. Now, last year they came up with a processor as well. So what is the difference between the processor of last year and the one this year? Yeah, the predecessor was called the CX A5000, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's similar except for the fact we kind of, we gave it a very favorable review last year. We liked the processor. They gave you full balanced outputs on all the channels, except for the subwoofer channels, which was like, what? Like, how do you do that? So we kind of grilled them on that in the review. They finally put it in, so everything's balanced, including the subwoofer outputs. They've updated it so it can support the new Kodaks, DTS-X. It's got HDCP 2.2, HDMI 2.0, all that stuff, all the high-def video supported. So it's basically a refresh with the latest uh, chip technology in there. Now, YPAL, they claim YPAL's been updated as well, mm -hmm. but when I talked to the Yamaha engineers at the show, you know, I said, well, does YPAL go down to 20 hertz? And they're like, they're like, no, basically it stops at 31.5 again. And they were like, why do you need it to go down to 20 hertz? And I'm like, well, you know, room modes happen in the 20 hertz range. Usually you have problems between 25 to 40 hertz. You can't fix that with a PEQ that stops at 31 hertz. So I'm a little disappointed that it's taken them so long to kind of step their A game up and go down to 20 hertz like everybody else is doing, right. or at least offer it manually. They have a manual PEQ for every channel, which is great, but again, it's it stops at 31.5 hertz. Right. So I'm hoping that as we keep bringing this up as a sore point, that they change it because they have the ability to do it. It's just trying to get them to change their mindset. Now, the positive thing I've always liked about YPOW is it may not do a lot for the bass, but it doesn't muck up the high end too much either because they don't overcorrect. Understood. I've turned YPOW on on systems. I'm like, yeah, you know, it sounds okay. It's, it's subtle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of these other room corrections, like Odyssey, tends to be way more aggressive. Right. So at least Yamaha's a little more conservative with that, and you could go in and manually edit it. You don't have to, you don't have to plug in a PC. You don't have to go into some weird menu. You just go right into the Yamaha on-screen display PEQ, and you just kind of tone it down. Right. Okay. So, and then, you know, Yamaha also has its MusicCast support on this, which they finally brought MusicCast back, and they've updated it. You can stream all your music through your hard drives. The CXA5100 supports it. I haven't tested it, but this looks awesome. They're going after Sonos. Yes. So, so they want your whole home to stream audio through their music cast system. And that's a big advantage if you set this up and you get it work and you're going to love it. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think Yamaha may experience a lot of success. You know, and one of the things that I respect about them is that they actually listen to feedback and, you know, it may take them long at times, like right now, you know, with this whole YPAC thing, but uh, once they get it going, they get it going. So, I mean, Definitely, Yamaha. I see a lot of longevity in their business. I predict oh, that. Oh yeah, definitely. And the and the cool thing is that all these processes we're comparing, they're the only ones that give you the DSP sound to make your room sound like a German toilet, <laughs> I love or that. a church, or a cathedral, or whatever you want. You have that ability. And the other funny thing that Yamaha does that I don't think anyone else does is when Yamaha puts a new feature on a product. They don't take an old feature away to put the new feature. They support everything. Yes. <laughs> so if you go on any Yamaha recent Atmos processor, not only do you have Atmos upsampler, but you still have ProLogic 2. Yes. Still have ProLogic. Yes. Okay? If you turn on a Danon product with Atmos, you just have the Atmos upsampler. You're not going to have all the old Dolby stuff. Right. I think that's, in one way, it's kind of complicated to the average consumer because it's like, what if you select the wrong mode? Yes. But at the same token, if you're really into tweaking everything and getting your best sound, I kind of like it because I still like ProLogic 2X music mode. I found it to be equally as good as the Dolby Upsampler when, it, when you're dealing with 5.1 or 7.1. In fact, sometimes I've actually preferred it. So I think it's kind of cool that Yamaha gives you that option. Plus, they give you all their DSP modes, like their music mode. Music video mode's really good for uh, music surround sound. I really like that. 
Yeah, definitely. Having options is great for the audioholic. And uh, one thing that Yamaha does is it's an additive company. They don't subtract. They keep adding. Which they do. <laughs> they do. You got you to gotta give them props on that. And, it, and that comes in at like $3,000. But if you go on their website, it's always on sale. They're running a sale now for 2500 bucks. That's kind of a hard product to beat. For 2500 bucks. it's got the Avantage build quality. It has that fifth foot for those who have a foot fetish. Yeah. <laughs> It's got you covered on that, and uh, that is a hard product to beat. I really am impressed with the Avantage line of receivers especially. They're some of the best Atmos receivers on the market, and now you're going to have the ability to do DTS-X. Yeah, that's awesome. And this processor comes with two independent sub-outputs, right? It does. It, yeah, you could, could you could adjust the delay and level. I like that. I'm happy about that. Thumbs up, man. Thumbs yep. up. Awesome. Well, let's see. Moving on to other some cool products over here. We have the Acurus Act 4, and you actually have a video on that. And what I'll do is that after our discussion over here, I'll go ahead and put the video so people can go ahead and check it out. Yeah, that's great, Hugo. And, you know, now we're getting into the uber expensive pre-pros. You know, Acurus used to be an American an American heritage, okay? They were the brand for America for high end back in the 70s, actually say the 80s and 90s. And then Klipsch took them over in the early 2000s and kind of ran them into the ground. Now they're back on their own, which is great. And um, they they basically went in hiatus for a while. They said they were coming out with this processor. Initially, it was coming out and it was only going to be like a $4,000 processor. But then Atmos hit the scene. Then they had to go back to the drawing board, you know, like the, like the coyote does when he's going to put a trap against the roadrunner. <laughs> he's got to go back into his room and just make a better robot. <laughs> That's what Acurus did. And by doing this, they put four TI chipsets in there so they could run Atmos and DTS X and independently switch to them without having any gap in audio, which is wow. great. They've got um, they've got a lot of horsepower in this thing. The best thing about it is their um, I really like their touchscreen display. Mm -hmm. they have this whole, you could basically control the whole product on the touchscreen. Most products you can't do that. You have to use the remote or your yep. equipment. Exactly. And the other thing that's really cool about it, um, they've got three subwoofer outputs, independent. Mm -hmm. So independent level, trim, and, and delay setting. Uh, they don't have any room correction at all. That was going to be my question. You read my mind. <laughs> they don't have room correction, but they do offer a manual PEQ for every channel down to 20 hertz. Ah, there you go. They did something right. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, it's it's a little spendy. This, this product's going to be about 8500 bucks which really dips into the Aragon pricing of, of yesteryear. So it's going to be interesting, if depending on the success of this product, if they come out with an Aragon version, because this product only supports, I shouldn't say only, it's, a, it's 11 channels is, is a pretty big amount of channels. Yes. It supports 11 channel, but if they're going to jump up and do what Trinov and, and Oro and all the other guys are doing, they're going to have to come out with a 16 or 32 channel processor to, right. to compete on the cinema level for people that are putting cinemas, like cinema scale home theaters in their house. Right, right. Wow, should be interesting to go ahead and see the future of uh, this company over here. Very, very cool. Yeah, it's we have a lot. It's 2.0 also, right? Well, yes, yeah. The, let me just tell you this. You can't have Atmos and DTS-X without having the latest in HDMI connectivity. It's just, it's just an assumption. It's just a given that you're going to have that as well. Understood, understood. Cool stuff, man. This is exciting. Like I said, I'll go ahead and put the video on this right now so people can go ahead and check it out. And then after the video, we'll continue our conversation. Okay. Guys, we're here with Rick Santiago of Acurus in Aragon. The companies are back. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing good. Thank Thanks you for me. bringing back an American heritage in yes. audio. <laughs> it's a big responsibility. Hopefully we're doing a good job. But, yes. Uh, let me tell you about what's hot at the show here at Cedia. This is our new Act 4 preamp processor. This is a 11.3 preamp processor that out of the box is not only doing Dolby Atlas, but it's also doing DTSX. Um, this unit retails for $8,500. It's got a touch panel display with 65,000 colors. Very simple setup. If you want to set up your speaker layout, for example, you want to go two channels, it's as easy as that. And you can hear the changes as they're being made. Adding your top speakers, tell you what layout you're running. 
go ahead and tune your speaker parameters. It, we try to make things very simple. These things, you know, can be complicated, especially if you try to use an IR remote, put screen displays on your TV. We just put it all on the front panel to make it simple. And we can take all of this stuff using the network connectivity of the product. You can bring all this right to your iPhone or your iPad just with an, our built-in web server. Um, we'll show you the layouts and we'll show you the color logos of the of the technologies that are coming in and what's being uh, processed coming out. We've got a lot of input capabilities on it, a bunch of HDMI. These are all uh, HDMI 2.0 and they've got uh, 4K support, HDCP 2.2 is supported on these, and we've got digital I.O., analog, even a phono input on input 5 for folks that want to take a listen to vinyl and maybe even try to upmix it with either Neural X or the Dolby Surround upmixer. Um, you can have a lot of cool audio experiences with it, beautiful display, and this thing is in production and we started in October. We're going to be shipping it in about six weeks once we finish all of our certifications. We're pretty excited about it. And it has, uh, it, it seems like it has a lot of horsepower, right? Because you say yeah. different DSPs. Yeah, for... we've, we've got an array of DSPs in here. These are the latest TI DSPs that are loaded up to do this task of both Atmos and DTSX. And they're running in a parallel mode so that they can switch very quickly between whatever technology is coming into them. And what are you doing for room correction? Um, we're actually not building in a room correction system here, but we have a room correction mode that allows you to uh, individually tune channels and tune them as a room and set parametric EQs, five bands per channel, across uh, all the outputs individually. Excellent. They go down to 20 hertz. And, and they go down to 20 hertz problems. and they can handle bass problems. That's love, right. Love that feature. So what's the price on this? The price on that is 8500 in the U.S. U.S. MSRP. Excellent. Well, this is something that is interesting to us, and we want to check one out when it's ready to ship. We'd be happy to. There's a bunch of them here running at the show doing the various demos, and we'd love to get one out for you guys to review. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, video was awesome, Gene. Um, with that said, moving on, our next product that we have is the Datasat RS20i. RS20i. Yes. Don't ask me how they came out with that no, nomenclature because it's a it's a 16 channel product, but they put a 20 on it, so I don't I don't really know. I really don't understand how the nomenclature for any audio product comes out. <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you, except for the cables, then they have like they have Copperhead and Palladium. Greek they have Greek gods, you know, they give you this power surge that you're going to get out of a piece of wire. But I digress. <laughs> I digress. Let's go back because I go off on tangents real quickly about the snake oils. Oh, we could talk about cables for like 30 minutes over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get back. Yeah. So I didn't even know in my ignorance. I didn't know the company Datasat until I went to CD this year and I heard their product in the RBH demo booth. Mm -hmm. And RBH put on, as I told you, they put on one of the best Atmos demos that we heard at the show. Yes. And the director of RBH is like, you know, Gene, you got to check out this Datasat processor. This pre-pro is just awesome. I'm like, all right, I'll take a look at it. And, you know, I was talking to the guy at Datasat, one of the owners there, and he was telling me all about it. It's 16 channels. It's got the full uh, DRAC Live 2 room correction system installed in it. Now, I was a little skeptical about DRAC because we had kind of mixed results when we tested it on the Emotiva product, but this guy was telling me um, that they spent their time and they really got the install right. They got the full version of DRAC, and Shane from RBH has been messing with all the room correction systems for years. He's like, you know what, Gene? He goes, normally I'm not a big fan of this room correction stuff, but DRAC was actually doing pretty good in this room. I have to tell you, I was really liking the results. So this is something we definitely want to take a closer look at. Now, this kind of borderlines on a consumer versus a installer kind of pro product. Uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't have it doesn't have RCA or XLR balanced connectors. They use all DB25. So you got to realize if you're going to install a product like this, you got to get DB25 adapters and plug them in. But it, it looks like it's a very flexible product. It's it's not cheap though. I mean, it's going to be like twenty grand. Well, uh, it has sixteen <laughs> channels. <laughs> Maybe that's where the RA twenty comes from. That that could be could be twenty grand. <laughs> there you go. 
Holy cow, yeah, 16 channels. That's uh, pretty interesting. And then it supports, as we said, you know, the Atmos and the DTSX and the Oro 3D. It does support the Oro 3D. That's that's a good point. I forgot to say that. The other thing, too, is the I, I talked to him about the analog uh, preamp section, and it's fully differential from input to output, which we like to see. You know, that's what my Denon AVP has, which is why I still hold on to that thing, and I haven't jumped onto the Atmos bandwagon yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I really am, you know, from our telecom days, when I designed analog front end of modems, everything I did was differentially balanced from input to output. None of the single-ended crap running through an inverter to give you a fake balance. Right. So I really like when something is fully differential from input to output because it gets better noise rejection, better you know better distortion results, and it's just if you want the state of the art audio, it should be fully differential from in to out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what you see when you get to these really high end products here. Well, you know, one thing I'm seeing, and this is so exciting, Gene, is that I just see just good engineering in these products. You know, it's like. This year just yes. looks like people were inspired. <laughs> and it's interesting, too, not to keep bouncing on the bouncy house speakers. <laughs> <laughs> not that we're in romper room here for a minute. <laughs> but it's interesting to note that every one of these products that were installed at CDO were using discrete speakers. They weren't in romper room putting bouncy house speakers. Go figure. I wonder why. <laughs> Maybe somebody read their physics books. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> Don't even get me started, dude. <laughs> yeah, we go off on tangents, my friend. <laughs> the next product is really interesting, Gene, because I mean, this looked like a really impressive room based on what I saw on the uh, video. Um, in fact, I have to ask you if Cliff still has his ears because it looked like, you know, when he was getting ready for the demo, it looked like he was about to like blow up or something. <laughs> well, I was worried that his teeth were going to explode. I, you know, I. On the way back to the hotel, it looked like he still had all of his teeth, but who knows? You know, he in six months, who knows if some of those wiggle loose? <laughs> there may be some side effects to this, but anyways, yeah. Harmon Harmon might be getting a bill for dental work after that demo. <laughs> this next product is a JBL Synthesis SDP seventy five, and it looks super cool. I mean, it looks like a thirty two channel Atmos DTSX and Oro three D processor. Yeah, it's it's basically it's it's basically a Trinov altitude processor. Okay, they they went to one of the best platforms in the industry. And why reinvent the wheel when someone else can do it for you? Right, right. And they're not trying to hide the fact that they did this. Okay, this is an announced partnership, so was, there's no gotcha moment here. They're not repackaging and not telling you. But the cool thing about it is they're not using the Trinov room correction. They're actually using their own proprietary sound field management system, which is based on a lot of science. Okay. It does what I do that takes me all day long to do by trial and error. When I set up multiple subs in my room, it will find you the right delay settings, the right level settings and the right EQ for each sub. And then if needed, it'll globally correct all the subs with EQ. I love it. So if you want, I mean, they had the best, tightest, and most consistent bass out of all the demos at the show. No matter where you sat in their room, the bass was very uniform. No bass traps. <laughs> they weren't sucking energy out of the room. They were actually using multiple subs to energize all the room modes, and then they were using EQ to bring down anything that was excessive. And it and it, it was just the greatest demonstration of how modern science can give you really great bass. Yes. That's awesome. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, you know the kind of people that are in their science team, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's You know, I don't know what the price of this product is, but I would imagine it's probably the price of an entry-level sports car. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it, uh, gosh, it looks like a powerhouse, I mean, to be able to support 32 channels. It's basically giving you the maximum uh, capability of Dolby Atmos in the home. That's incredible. That's so, awesome. I mean, you, you can't add any more speakers than that at this moment. Yeah, it's 32, I mean. How big, in your opinion, how big does a room need to be to be able to hold, like, 32 speakers and you actually get a good sound experience? Because if the room is too little, obviously, you yeah. know, if you go ahead and load up every single inch with a speaker. It's great, yeah. You wind up like some, like, there's a guy on our forums, Andy Summers. He's, God bless him, man. He's got a speaker in every square inch of the ceiling. <laughs> it's fun to watch, but I don't know if I'd want to sit in his room. <laughs> But, you know, I would venture to say if you're going to do a full 32-channel install like this, you probably need a good 15,000 cubic foot room. Okay. 
with multiple seating. Because why are you going to put all these um, speakers if you're not trying to get broad dispersion across multiple seats? You know, if you're going to have one sweet spot, you don't, you really don't need more than five or seven speakers, quite exactly. frankly. Exactly. I think that's a lot of things. That that's something that neophytes in this industry don't understand is the fact that more is not always better. You know, I mean, you really for for holding a 32 speaker setup, you better have the right size room for that because otherwise, if your room is too little. You're just going to have a mess of sound that it's not going to Yeah, you've got to have separation between the speakers. You know, it's interesting because I had a, a conversation with Dr. Floyd Toole, and I can't remember who did the research, but he was telling me about that they, did, they took a 24-channel mix, a very high-fidelity mix, with 24 speakers, and they put it in a room. They blindfolded the listeners, and they, what they did was they kept shutting off speakers and then, you know, mixing down. And it took, guess how many speakers it needed for the people to be convinced that the surround effect wasn't significantly compromised? How many? Oh, only five. Really? Five speakers is pretty darn good. Despite the industry saying you need to put a speaker here, you need to put a speaker there, you need to put a speaker by your fish tank. <laughs> a bouncy one at that. A bouncy one. <laughs> five speakers, very good speakers, properly placed with a good mix is pretty darn good. So adding a couple of height speakers and some back channels is, is, is icing on the cake. But don't get caught up with putting a speaker in every freaking available surface in your room. Because, uh, you know, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. And that, that gives a lot of hope to people that are just getting into the industry and saying to themselves, well, maybe I'll never have super high quality sound because I don't have the budget to support a 32-speaker setup. And the fact is, you may not need that. In fact... More than likely, if you're having issues supporting, like I say, a six-speaker setup, more than likely you don't have the room anyways to support a 32-speaker setup. Exactly. So, anyways, just wanted to, to mention that because it just caught, caught my attention. Um, cool stuff, man. I mean, Cydia this year, man, and it looks like it kicked ass, to be honest with you. Yeah, everybody had great solutions here. Um, you know, DTS-X was working, but it's still... I said before it wasn't vaporware in the last video, but in reality it kind of is vaporware because there's no software. All you have is a demo disc. Ah. Okay. So you can't even if you had DTS X on your processor right now, which you don't. Nobody has it in the home right now. We're, we're looking at probably December, January, maybe even later because they keep delaying it. Mm -hmm. So let's say December, January, we get DTS X firmware updates in our, in our whether it's a Denon receiver, Marantz, Yamaha. Ankyo, whatever. Mm -hmm. You still only have like two demo discs. <laughs> so and and I'll, 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 let me interject one. I do have X Machina. So okay. X Machina, and that's a good movie. It so is. let's say let's say by Christmas you might have four or five movies and a couple of demo discs. Okay. So still the so the software is pretty scarce. The other thing too about DTSX is you know they were promising all the speaker remapping technology. And this dialogue um, level increase, so you can make the dialogue louder in the movie. I haven't seen one demonstration of these features in any of the products, nor have any of the manufacturers told me that they're going to be supported in this generation products, nor have any of the software companies come out and said, hey, we're going to put this as a feature in our Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. So where is it? Show me the money. <laughs> Show me the money. Because right now, DTSX seems to be a copy of Atmos in terms of its feature set. Right. And we're not even going to discuss Oral 3D because there you just have the Ongo y Bongo thing. So <laughs> Oingo Boingo in 107 dB sustained levels in their demos. <laughs> Are you okay, USA? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> ah, awesome. Anyways, good stuff, Gene. So I think with that said, we said everything we're going to say today, and I think that's uh, enough to warrant crucifixion for the both of us, and uh, therefore I should stop it there. <laughs> I think we've done enough. We've done our bit for king and country. <laughs> yes. So with that said, guys, thank you for uh, watching, and uh, you know, if you like this video, click like on the button below, and also share it with your friends. And until next time, keep listening. Keep listening.